Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we will be doing another review in our Smart Home series, and that is for the Logitech Harmony Hub. Now the Harmony Hub is a $99 hub that brings smart home tech to your home entertainment devices. Now we all have TVs and some of us have stereos and consoles, and with them come a number of remote controls to juggle and manage. The Harmony Hub puts all of those remotes into one device that not only allows you to control those devices with your smartphone, it also lets you set up scenes that integrate with your smart home tech, like your lights and even your thermostat. Now the Harmony Hub has nice packaging that includes the hub itself, which is used to control your devices, like the hubs that we're used to with other smart home tech. It also comes with a manual that walks you through the setup process, including how best to place your Harmony Hub in your setup. It includes a warranty card, along with all of the cables needed to connect and control the device. On the back of the Harmony is a pairing and reset button, a port for the power cable, and two IR or infrared ports. The packaging includes one IR cable that is used to control devices that use IR remotes and comes in handy when you have devices both inside and outside your home entertainment cabinet. There is also a power cable for plugging the hub into power and a USB cable in case you prefer to set up the hub on your computer instead of through your iOS or Android device. Installation is pretty simple. You just plug in the power to the hub and connect any IR cables that you might need. You want to be sure to follow the manual for how to place the Harmony hub in your setup, but in my case I just chose to put the hub in the center of my TV cabinet with the IR cable laying just in front of my television so that it can turn the TV on and off and perform other actions on it. You may also want to make sure that the hub is close to any devices that you want to control like my Xbox in this case. Once the device is plugged in, you will get a blinking red light. You wait 30 seconds and then begin the setup process. Now that I have things set up physically and the hub is blinking, let's go to my iPhone and finish the setup process with the Harmony app, which you download from the App Store. Okay, so here I am over on my iPhone and I'm in the Harmony application. And so we have the option to connect to a hub or set up a new hub. So in our case, we want to set up a new hub. So we're going to tap on set up hub. And so it's going to play a little video for us that shows us how to connect to the hub. And it says to wait uh, for 30 seconds till that red light is blinking. And once that's done, then it takes you to the next screen. And so as we've already seen, we've got that set up and we've waited the 30 minutes or 30 seconds. And so we're ready to go. Now what it does is it picks up your wireless network. And so it asks for your pass, uh, password for that. So let me go ahead and tap, uh, type that in here. Okay, once I have my password in there, I just tap on join. And so now it's going to connect to the wireless network. And so it's doing that with the hub itself to make sure that it's uh, connecting and getting set up. So depending on uh, your network and all of those different pieces, it might take a little bit of time. You just have to wait for it to finish. And once it's done, it takes it to the next screen. And so what it wants you to do is to sign up with a Logitech uh, username and password. And so you can do it by Facebook or through Google or through an email where you set up your own. So let me just go ahead and log into my account here. Okay, so now that I've got that in, it's connecting and it asks me to accept the terms on the uh, licensing agreement. I'll just tap accept. And so now it's going to update the software. It says uh, wait while it's upgrading the software. So it's going to go through that process. Could take about three to five minutes. You can see it tells us it's downloading, then installing, and then preparing my hub. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do its download. And once it's done, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so now that the update is complete, you can see that it says I've got the same remote model uh, because I do have another Harmony Hub on my network. And so I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So it wants me to uh, ask if it wants to restore the activities from the other hub because it does store all of this information in the cloud. Or do you want me to add it as a new remote? So in this case, we're going to add as new remote. So we're just going to tap that on the bottom because it's in a second location. So it's going to prepare my hub. And it says it takes about a minute or so to get that set up. So it's going to go through this process. Once it's finished, it will then show up. There we go with a screen that shows me a little more information about the product info. So you can take some time to get to know the Harmony Hub. It has a list of compatible devices. You can see there's the hub there. If I tap on the 
on the hub. It will give me information on where to place the hub and the best way to use it. Uh, the same is true for the uh, IR mini blasters in case you have one of those that are set up, which we do. We have that little mini blaster already set up. So it does give you a little bit of a tour on how to walk through this. So I'm just going to tap on the upper right corner there to the next page. And so then it says, do you already own a Harmony remote that you want to copy or import the settings? Now this is nice if you did have a previous Harmony remote of any kind, you could actually copy the existing settings to your hub and then that would function the same way with your iPhone or through your voice commands or whatever you're going to use. In this case, I'm just going to set up as new. So now what it does is it finds different devices on my network and you can see all of the different things that it's found on my network that it can control. See I've got some Sonos speakers, I've got a Yamaha receiver, I've got a couple of Apple TVs uh, that are set up, I've got a Roku, I've got a, uh, some Philips Hue bulbs and that sort of thing and those are the devices that it's, uh, that it's found and I can rescan and do some others. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off a few of these because I know that these uh, don't exist uh, in my current location, so I don't want those to be added in there. Uh, my Philips Hue stuff, that's fine. Uh, for Apple TVs, if I just tap the I there, it'll take me to uh, the next page, which will show me which uh, generation Apple TV it is and what the IP address is on it. So that way I can check to see which one I'm supposed to add. So let me just go ahead and fix that and then we'll go to next. Okay, so now I've got uh, the two devices that I want selected uh, turned on. I'm just going to tap on Next. And so it's going to add those two devices to my Harmony Hub automatically because it knows that I want to use those in order to use the Hub and control it. So we're going to let it go ahead and add those devices. It could just take a, a few minutes as it's transferring that information. There you can see that the uh, Hue bridge was detected on the network. So they want you to press the center button in the bridge to pair it uh, with the Harmony Hub. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, now that that's all paired, you see that I can add devices, additional devices, by hitting the button below. So let me just go ahead and close this window. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my Philips Hue right there, and I've got my Apple TV. Uh, but let's go ahead and add a few other devices. So I'll just tap on Add Device. And so what it does is it asks you what type of device you want to add. An entertainment device, some kind of home control. A computer, you want to scan you uh, for Wi-Fi devices, you can do that as well. So if I just tap on entertainment device, I can tap on that. And what I need to do is put in the device manufacturer name and the model number in order for me to add the particular device. So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, now that I've got that information in there, I'll just tap on add. And it's going to add my LG TV, and you can see that it's added that on there. And now what I can do is go through and just add other devices as I go. So let me go ahead and add some of these devices, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Now, in some instances, you'll go to add a device, like I tried to add my Nintendo Switch here, and it'll let you know that it's not compatible with IR-based remotes, and it's not compatible with all Harmony Hub-based products. So it does give you a warning there. Uh, nice that it even shows a picture of it just to let you know. I'm going to go ahead and tap Next, though and it's going to go ahead and add it, but it's just letting me know that it may not work very well. Uh, so let's go ahead and tap Add a Device again. Now, a few other things you can add is you can add a home control. If you just uh, tap on that, you can see the different home control systems that you can add to the Har Harmony Hub. Uh, in my case, I've got some Nest devices, so let's go ahead and just click Nest. And so what it's going to do is, is uh, cause me to sign in. So let me go ahead and sign in. And so I've got to sign into my Nest account, so it's going to take me over to Safari to have me sign in. So let me go ahead and put that information in here. Okay, so it goes through the sign-in process here. And then it just, uh, let me just say not now. And then it just shows me the works with Nest and that uh, Logitech can do the following types of things here. And it gives you a list of stuff if I accept it. So I can control the thermostat, see, uh, see Nest products, carbon monoxide information, set home and away, that sort of stuff. So I want to do that. I'm just going to tap on Accept. So it's going to add this hub to my Nest uh, setup. It says that the login was successful. And so it's going to ask me if I want to open this page in Harmony. I'll say Open. And it's just going to take me back to the application here inside Harmony. And it's just going to retrieve the devices for me. So it might take a little bit of time as it's retrieving those devices and downloading the information. But the nice thing is, is that you can set this up so that it will work with your 
uh, Harmony device. So again, I'm gonna let it go ahead and do its thing, and when it's done, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see here, I have uh, protects and thermostats there. If I just tap on the plus here, I can add the uh, thermostat. You can see I've got one in the hallway that it shows me that I can control, and then it's got my Nest Protects, and it shows the different Nest Protects that I've got. So it's just a visual of what I have available. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap the arrow on the top, and so now Nest has been added, and you see that my Nest information is on there as well. So again, just tapping Add Device, you can go through and add even computers if you wanted to add a computer on here, that you wanted to have a particular computer or laptop do something. So for instance, if I tap on Mac, and I go forward this way, it's going to add a Mac computer, and you can see that it says added the Mac computer if I wanted to have that device added. At any time, if, uh, if I want to get rid of devices, I can hit this uh, to the next screen and say delete device. I can also rename them in here as well. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this device. It's going to ask me if I'm sure. I'll say I'm sure and now I've deleted it and so now the device is gone. So now that I've got all my devices added, everything's set and ready to go, I just tap the arrow on the top there and it's going to save my devices so that they're all saved in my Harmony Hub. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run and when it's done I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now that all of our devices are added, it's going to ask us to test it just to make sure that everything works. And so if you've got uh, things inside the cabinet, the hub will hit those things, but it says you're going to need the IR uh, blaster on the outside of the cabinet if you're going to put the uh, hub inside the cabinet so it'll hit all the other devices. And so that's what we've done by setting it up by the TV. So I'm just going to tap the arrow across the top. So now what it's going to do is it's going to do a power on off test, just a test to make sure that everything is working. So let's go ahead and uh, test. Let's test the television first. So we're going to say off because I have it on. Okay, so that turned the television off, so that worked. So we're going to go ahead and turn the television back on. And so now my television is back on. Now, if at any time it's not working, you can tap the fix area over here. And so what it will do is allow you to troubleshoot each of these devices. So for instance, if I want to troubleshoot the Microsoft Xbox One, I would tap on that, go to the next page, and then it will ha walk me through this whole system here about whether it can try to power it on or not. And so then it's going to work to test it for me and troubleshoot it. And it's going to say, did it power on? In this case, I'm going to say yes. And so then it says it's okay and it takes me back. If it says no, then it gives me suggestions on ways to fix it to make it work. So our main devices are working right there. So that's excellent. So now we're going to tap next. And so now what we're going to do is take a look at, uh, at lights. And so all my devices that uh, are a part of the same group are in here. And so I need to uh, work with my various lights here. So I need to add a group. And you can see I've got all my lights here where I can add a group. Let's just tap on add a group. And you can see here in the group, then I can choose what lights I want to use. And so in my case, I want to use everything that is related to my upstairs. And so I've got my displays there. I've got my loft lights. Let's just choose all of those. I've got the TV stand. There's another loft light there. I've got my desk lights and this loft light there. So those are all of the lights that I need. And I'm just going to call this loft lights. So I've got those lights all set up. I'm going to say done. And so now I've got my group here of lights. And so I just need to tap the right arrow. And so now it's going to add that group of lights for me. You can see that it's uh, going through its process there of adding them. And you can create these different groups with your lights. If you've got uh, different hue bulbs and that sort of thing, you can go ahead and set up different lights. And you can see that there's my loft lights. If I wanted to be more specific, maybe I just wanted to only turn over the turn off or on the overhead lights. I could set it up that way or I could be more specific. So it's up to you what groups you want to add. So let me just add a couple more groups here, at least one more, and then we'll come back. Okay, so now I've got all my light groups set up and ready to go. So let me go ahead and just tap on the uh, forward button on the top right there. And it says now we can create different activities. So I can create a watch TV activity so that with a touch of a button I'll be watching my, acti uh, watching my TV and it will change all the inputs for me. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to tap the next screen here. And so the devices that I want to have come on when I'm watching television would be the LG and let's say the Apple TV because that's what I'm using right now. Let me go ahead and tap next. And so now it's going to power on both of those. And so now it's selected the, the Apple TV and it's actually set up that way on my monitor, on my television that the Apple TV is on. And so I'm going to tap that yes, my devices are on so that that's all set and ready to go. And now I can set up the input settings if I want to. Select the input settings for your device for the TV watch activity. So let's come in here. And then you can see I've got all the different inputs for my devices here. 
You can see I've got, uh, I've even got some smart TV devices on there for a direct link to Amazon and that sort of thing. And so what I need to do now is select which HDMI port it is for my Apple TV. So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, now that I've got the uh, right port tapped there, I'm gonna go ahead and tap the upper right corner. And so now I've got the right input setting. Just go ahead and go back. And it says, am I able to see and hear the content coming from my television? And so the answer is yes, I can. Everything's set and ready to go. And now I can adjust the home control devices when I start or end my watch uh, TV activity. And so if I wanted to, if I just uh, tap the next arrow to adjust, I can set up and select other devices that I want to have start. So I could set up, uh, let's say, my different lights to come on if I wanted to do that. And you can see I've got all my lights there. I could have those dim or come on, or I could set particular hue scenes. If I just tap on the scene, you see I've got all the different uh, scenes there. I could set it on concentrate for the loft or read or energize, uh, all of that, relax. You can see all of the all of the different settings that I've got there. And so it would be related to the uh, actual loft itself. Uh, you can see the other ones are just specific to display and that sort of thing. And so, you know, if I just scroll down, you see I got all these different things that are already set up inside of my actual uh, Hue application. It's read all of those and brought them over. So as you can see, I've got a number of different things that I could set up. So let me go ahead and uh, just take a look at this and set one that might work. Uh, in our case, I'm just going to go ahead and just delete and go back. But in the future, I could go ahead and have all of these different lights added to my particular setting for television. If I just tap back, then I can just skip this. And once I skip it, it's gonna save the activity for me. And I can test it now or I can test it later. And so in this case, I'm just gonna test it later. And so now I've got that. Now I can use favorite channels as a way to quickly access uh, favorite TV channels. Uh, in my case, I'm not doing that because I'm using an Apple TV, but if I want to, I could just tap next. And as you could see, I could check a different service provider if I was using cable. I'm gonna tap back because I'm not. And I'm just gonna tap skip this. And so now the watch TV activity has been added. Now at any time I can add other activities as well just by tapping add activity. And as you can see, I have access to all of my different uh, activities here. I could even do watch uh, Netflix, which is actually a button that I have on my remote, but I could just uh, uh, say uh, with uh, Amazon, uh, with Echo or one of those other ones, I could say watch Netflix and with my voice I can activate it. I'll show you how to set that up later, but this gives you an idea of how the actual Harmony application works. Now, if at any time you want to edit an activity, maybe let's say I want to add some things to this particular one, I can just tap on the arrow to the right of it. And so it'll take me into this screen where I can do some editing. If I wanted to, if I tap the little pencil, I can come in here and edit the name. I can also choose whatever icon I want to use for this particular activity. So you can see there's a whole bunch of different icons there that will help distinguish it. In my case, since it is watching TV, I'm just going to leave it alone. When you're done, you can either go back or go forward if you've made a change. I'm just going to tap back because I haven't made any change. Now, the other things I can do is I can edit uh, the start sequence. I can change the order of things, what I want to start first, uh, how I want it to start up. I can add a step in between. I can even add a delay. Now, where this comes in really Really handy is if you wanted to add a delay in there let's say you have a receiver that takes a little while to uh, uh, boot up or maybe you have a television that takes a while to start up you can start the television create a delay of let's say 20 seconds or whatever so that when the receiver turns on then it has enough time to grab all the audio and everything from the television and set the right input so uh, there are some fine-tuning steps that you can do with the application too which really makes it great uh, the other thing I can do is I can edit home controls and if I just tap on that uh, what I've done here is I selected uh, all of my lights uh, in my loft area there you can see I've set uh, selected all of those if I hit next what it does is it has me select whatever activity I want let's just go into the display and I can choose the colors if I want a warm or cool color or various colors here like let's say I want to make all the lights red uh, because it's a uh, movie time let's say so I'm gonna put them up in the red area up there and then I can apply it to all of the lights and then save it and then it's going to now also turn off the lights when I when I finish that so let's go ahead and say apply to all and then I'm going to close this window. You can see they're all selected. I can choose when to adjust. Right now it's set as always, but I can say, let's say only after sunset, because that's the only time I really want the lights to be on at all, because during the daytime, that's not going to be effective. And you can see it shows on and what percentage uh, in terms of how dim it is or how bright it is. If I just tap uh, next over there at the very top, I just tap that arrow 
it's going to wait because it's going to configure it for me. And you can see that it's setting it up. And once it's done setting it up for me, then I can go in and make some other adjustments to it as well. And so there you go. So now in here, I can set a um, edit the end sequence if I wanted to. And so this is when it's done, uh, the end se sequence of how everything is set up and how it looks. So again, here now I can also uh, rearrange things in whatever order I want them to turn on. I can also add a delay and edit more home controls. Let's just tap back here. I can set a schedule in here as well. So if I wanted to have it come on at a certain time or end at a certain time on certain days, I could do that as well. Uh, which is a nice feature. I can also use sensor triggers. So if I've got sensors in my house in any of my rooms here, you can see I've got some of my Nest sensors there. Uh, whenever those sensors are tripped, I can also cause certain things to happen, like lights to go on and that sort of thing. In my case, I don't have anything to change there. And then I've got uh, keyboard options as well. If I wanted to do that, I could have a keyboard uh, do some changes for me if I've got one of those, which I don't. So I'm just going to tap back. And then finally down here, I can delete the activity or I can rerun the activity if I want to do that. So that gives you an idea of how this works. Uh, again, if I just uh, go forward, I'm back into the activity. If I tap the arrow on the top right again, you can see that my setup is complete. So I can exit the setup. And it's going to put me into the remote application. So now I've got my activities there. You can see I've got my watch TV activity. I can edit them at any time. I've also got uh, my devices. If I just tap on my devices, you can see all the different devices I've got there, including my lights. You can see it's telling me what the degrees are on my uh, actual um, thermostat there. I got my sensors and all the devices that I've added to this particular hub. So you can have multiple hubs and just add those devices as well. If I just uh, tap over on the left there in the menu, I can fix issues there, switch hubs, edit reset, do a whole new setup, and then an upgrade. And then again, there are some app settings if I wanted to do that, if I wanted to auto lock it or dim the screen, I could do that as well. I'm just gonna get out of that and come back into activities. So that gives you an overview on the setup of the Harmony Hub. Uh, I am going to come back in a second part of the series and show you how it works with some of the other things like Amazon Echoes and also being able to set it up in HomeBridge as well. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.